Hello. Uh, so my name is Mike Rose. Um, I used to write about video games. I used to write for Kotaku and Gamma Sutra and places like that. And then at the last DevGam, Alex from Tiny Build got me drunk. And so now I'm at Tiny Build, because that's how it works. Um, so I basically, I do a few different things at Tiny Build, but one of the things I do is find new games for us to work with. So if anybody has anything they'd like to show to us, then do just come and find me, um, because I'm British, so I'm very easily approachable. Uh, so yeah, just come and find me and talk to me and show me your game. I will look at every single game, uh, and it will be awesome. Uh, so today I am going to talk about, as the title suggests, I'm going to talk about Twitch uh, and just video in general, things like YouTube, um, and essentially just trying to get your game covered by these kind of people. Um, but just before I talk about that, there's uh, one thing I wanted to mention. So um, the what I essentially understand is that there are so many Russian developers. Uh, I, I was looking through all the games that were in this uh, game jam recently, and you know there was like 300 plus entries. Kind of blew my mind how many games there were coming from Russian developers. Um, but in a lot of the, especially when I was writing about games, we barely ever heard about them. And it's a massive shame because there's just so many amazing games coming out of Russia. So one thing I want to say about this talk is that everything I'm going to talk about is absolutely applies to you and you should definitely be doing. You shouldn't be looking at it and thinking, oh well, I, you know, I, can't, I, I can't go and email the, the Kotaku and people like that because they're not going to care about my game. They absolutely will care about your game. They don't care where games are from. When I was writing about games, it was all about how good the game was. Um, so you absolutely need to talk about your games because if you don't talk about your games, no one's going to hear about them, um, which is, again, a massive shame. Um, so yeah, I just want you to keep that in mind that I absolutely want you to talk about your games. You should come and talk to me about your games uh, because that's the only way anyone's going to hear about them. Um, and uh, just before, again, just before I talk about the video stuff, I've talked before about trying to get the, the kind of press to talk about your games and write about it. Uh, I did a talk a couple of years ago called Getting Your Independent Game Noticed. You can watch it for free online. It's on the GDC vault. If you just go on there and search for that title, you will find that video for free. Um, so it's definitely worth going and talking, going and watching that because it will kind of give you the background on certain things that you should do when trying to get the press to care. Okay, so I've got through all of that now. Let's talk about video. Um, so I'm going to be talking about Twitch and YouTube and very briefly about Vine as well, um, strangely enough. So uh, I'm sure you're all very much aware, but I'll just sort of mention what this whole thing is about. So what has happened in the last couple of years is that getting covered in the press, getting written things about your game. It's still important, but not as important as getting someone to make a video about your game or stream your game online. Um, the, the fact is that if somebody, you know, so, someone can write an article about your game and it might get a couple of thousand views to your website or something, but if someone like Total Biscuit or a big YouTuber like that makes a video about your game, it can basically just sell your game single-handedly. Um, so it's really kind of important. Um, so yeah, the YouTuber thing has been happening for a while, but now live streaming on Twitch uh, is starting to get rather big as well. Um, so I'm basically going to talk about the best ways that we have found to get people to, to kind of cover your game in video. Um, so yeah, so for Tiny Build, We've been working with uh, with video and YouTubers, etc., for quite a while. So when Tiny Build's first game, No Time to Explain, came out, the press weren't totally into it, uh, and it didn't really get much traction there, and therefore it didn't really get many sales. But then YouTubers started playing No Time to Explain, and they just loved it. There's videos. If you go on YouTube, there's videos with tens of millions of views on them uh, for the game, um, and just because of that. The game sold really well. It kind of shows you the the the, the thing that the YouTubers can do that the press can't. Um, so then, when Speedrunners came out on early access, um, again the press covered the game. They liked the game, and yet we still didn't see. You know, you see what the press do. They do little bits here and there, tiny spikes, 
And then YouTube has started playing speedrunners again, and all of a sudden there's tons of people playing it. Um, and then like with live streaming, so we've been doing a lot, working with a lot of Twitch live streamers recently. Uh, when PewDiePie live streamed speedrunners, it was actually like the biggest sales date for speedrunners, um, which is kind of amazing. Um, so as you can see, it says, we love you video, make babies with us, um, which is kind of our philosophy now, really. <laughs> Uh, so I'm going to talk about Twitch first uh, because that's sort of the exciting, the big exciting upcoming one at the moment. So in case you don't know what Twitch is, uh, it's essentially a platform where you can people can live stream games off PC and now Xbox One and PS4 as well. Uh, and right now, the the last time that they gave stats, they said I think which was around Christmas time, so it's probably more now. Uh, they said that they get about one million concurrent viewers. So there's uh, there's always at least one million people um, watching videos on Twitch at any time. And they get about a hundred million unique people visiting the site every single month, which is crazy. Uh, and, and they now actually have their own conference, uh, where they're, they're going to have their first conference in September uh, in San Francisco, I think. So yeah, they're growing exponentially. Um, so we want to then explore how we can get these millions of people to be watching videos of our games. So what I did was I went and surveyed hundreds of live streamers. So I got details from all, I, I contacted them all, I put out a survey to them, uh, and just got hundreds and hundreds of them to explain what it was that they were looking for in games. Uh, so the, the top one that they said the top reason they would play a game is because another live streamer is playing it, which isn't massively useful, not until you get live streamers playing it. Um, but the other things that they said was that they were looking for new games that were coming out on Steam and they were looking on YouTube as well. So they're like the main places. They, they were also watching video game press sites. So of course, still getting press is, uh, is important, but it's more like you wanna get press so that you will get covered by live streamers. Um, so yeah, you basically want to be working absolutely everything at the same time. You want to be working live streamers and YouTube and the press all together. Uh, because if you can get all of them in a kind of good mix, then hopefully you're going to get covered straight across the board. Um, so the interesting thing is that live streamers just don't receive any emails at all. Uh, so, so what you can see here is uh, the people answered how many emails they get every single day. And the vast majority of them are getting roughly zero. It's like hundreds of them. Um, so if you email a live streamer, then the chances are they are definitely going to see your email, um, which is obviously kind of useful because if you can capture their attention with that email, then hopefully they're going to talk about your game. Um, so if you are emailing live streamers, the thing that they mainly want is they just want a copy of the game. They just want you to send them a Steam code or if it's on mobile and just an iOS code or whatever, they just need the code so that they can get straight into the game uh, or just a free download for the game if you don't have codes. Um, and they kind of want as well, they, they kind of want a story that they can share because the difference between Twitch and YouTube is that on Twitch, they, they try to treat it more as a show, right? So in a YouTube video, they make a, you know, a 10 minute video and it, they try to condense it into exactly what is going to interest people and keep people watching. But on Twitch, they just they live stream for seven hours at a time. So, and sometimes they're just kind of sat there just chatting. So they kind of want things to talk about the game as well. While they're booting the game up, they want to be talking about it a little bit. They, they generally just want a little bit of a story. So the kind of emails that you would send to the press are useful to send to, to Twitch streamers as well. Um, they want a link to a YouTube video as well because they want to actually see the, the game in motion because that is the easiest way for them to see whether they're going to care or not. Because if they just click a link to a video and they see, oh, this doesn't look like my kind of thing at all, they're just going to stop. Um, so these are the kind of things that you want to be sending them in the email. Um, other thing that live streamers want, which is kind of unique to them, is that they want free stuff, basically. They want stuff to be able to give away to their viewers. Because live streamers, they are essentially tr they're trying to build a community, um, which is, is kind of different to how YouTube works. They, again, because they're just live streaming all day, they're trying to get people to stay with them and keep watching by kind of, you know, if they, give, if they can say, hey, in like half an hour, 
I'm going to give away some free stuff, then there's a chance you're going to stick around for half an hour. Um, so yeah, they if you kind of send instead of you know one or two codes to these live streamers, if you send them a few, then the chances are that they may live stream just so that they can give your games away. We know that that's happened for us, um, and as well, live streamers they uh, they really kind of like being able to test out games early, which again is quite different to YouTube. On YouTube, uh, the the people making videos on YouTube they usually want uh, a video on the launch day, so they want to be able to put you know, one video out when the game is launched, or they want to make a series of them uh, after the game is launched. Whereas Twitch streamers, they will do that, but they'd also quite like to show the game off early, so it makes them kind of feel special and they can build a community around the idea that they show games early. Um, so yeah, again, that it's a really good thing. That's another thing that we're kind of working with Twitch streamers on with some of our games, sending them early builds so that they can check them out early and, and show their viewers. Um, the other thing to note about Twitch as well is that a lot of live streamers, uh, they really want developers to actually seem like they care and they're not just just spamming every Twitch streamer. They, they Twitch streamers, they want to feel like they, they are kind of special, I guess. They want it to feel like you have gone and researched them and you actually care about what they do. So it's a really good idea to actually go and research a lot of these people and just watch a few of the things they do before getting in contact with them. I know it sounds like a lot of work, but it can be really worth it if you can get some of these bigger ones to cover you. Um, so a big thing that can go wrong with this is if your game actually doesn't live stream properly, which I've seen loads of times. People, you know, they send out their game to live streamers and the people try to, to stream it using whatever software they've got and it just breaks, it just won't pick it up. Uh, that's happened loads when I've tried to live stream some games. So. The obvious thing to do is just go and download all of the main live streaming software, right? And if you go and download it all and make sure your game works in it all, then the chances of it happening are greatly reduced. So it's a really good idea to actually go and do that. Um, it sounds simple, but a lot of people don't think about it. So yeah, you should definitely go do that. Um, now, I mean, there's loads of reasons why a person might not live stream your game, and actually, the majority of live streamers aren't going to. Uh, and the, most of the reason is because it's just not their kind of game, right? There's there's a lot of live streamers who will just stream the very same kind of game. So there's there's a lot of, for example, who will stream the road like roguelikes and things like that, or will just stream Minecraft or League of Legends. Um, if those people don't cover your games, then they were just never going to. So it's the kind of part where you, you don't want to be disheartened by that because they they have a very specific mindset. Um, so the best thing to do is just to keep trying. Um, that's that's just what we've been doing. It's it's all about chipping away and finding those live streamers who are going to, to stream your games and building up a rapport with those people. Um, some games as well just don't work very well when you're live streaming them. So for example, local multiplayer games, really hard to stream. It's kind of the same for YouTube as well. And some games as well, they're just, you know, I'm sure you know the kind of games that they're really fun to play, but they're not that interesting to watch. So, I mean, for me, for example, um, something like civil, a Civilization or something like that, I could sit and play Civilization for a long time, but I don't know if I'd want to sit and watch somebody else play it. Um, so they, these are just the kind of things to keep in mind when you're sort of working on who to work with and what your game's like. Um, so just an idea of the way that we've been handling Twitch. Um, so we've basically cobbled together a big list of live streamers with contact info, etc. Uh, that has been really kind of useful because, you know, obviously we can just, when we've got preview builds of games we want to send out, then it makes it really easy to be able to hit all those people. Um, and we just basically just keep them up to date as well with what we're up to. Um, what we've been trying as well, trialing, is, um, is having what we call Twitch days where we, uh, if, if, for example, one of our games is going on sale on Steam, then we will email all Twitch people saying, like, here's a copy of the game. If you live stream it on this day, then we will, and, and kind of tweet at us, then we will give you extra copies of the game so that you can share them with people. Um, and that seems to work quite well. We're still kind of trying to hone it, but um, it's, uh, yeah, it, it seems that that's the kind of uh, engagement that Twitch streamers will work with. Um, and as well, just actually working directly with Twitch 
uh, is a thing that I think a lot of developers don't think to do. So Twitch, um, even though they're massive now, it's still quite early and they're still trying to work out the kinks of how exactly they do things. Um, and if you just get in contact with Twitch, the chances are that they might want to just work with you directly, especially at one of their um, their kind of live events. They have a lot of, especially all the PAXs and E3s and things like that, they have big presence there. Um, so you can definitely try and get in on their live shows. Uh, of course, the other thing you can do with Twitch as well is actually just live stream your the, the development of your game. Uh, so I know that there's people who just every single day just live stream the whole game, uh, live stream all the development, them kind of sat at their computer and their screens. Um, at, at Tiny Build, we do a live stream every single Friday afternoon, uh, where we kind of basically sit with the developers and show where certain games have got up to, um, and that seems to work quite well. That's really good for building up a community. Um, uh, Rami from Vlambeer actually just wrote a thing a few days ago uh, called Tips for Development Streaming that you might want to check out um, because that has generally just got loads of info on the best ways, all the different things that you need for streaming development of your game. Um, so you should check that out if you're interested in doing that. Um, so this is useful. This is a list. You know, I was telling you we had our list of uh, info for getting in contact with live streamers. Uh, if you go to tinybuild.com/twitch, then you can just find all of those email addresses for free. Um, so yeah, that's really kind of useful if you want to be getting in touch with these people. Right. So I've done Twitch. Uh, let's just briefly move on to YouTube as well because that's still very important. Um, so just a quick idea of uh, kind of examples of why YouTube is important. Uh, so uh, a lot of the bigger YouTubers will kind of single-handedly uh, make a game a success. So for example, there's a big YouTuber called Nerd Cubed, um, and when he made a video of Race the Sun, I think Race the Sun had been on Steam Greenlight for a long time, many, many months. And where I think when he played the game, it just then immediately got through Greenlight. Um, there was uh, a, a Russian YouTuber uh, played the Skulls of the Shogun, and uh, after he kind of made a series of videos for it, and uh, for Skulls of the Shogun now, um, it's actually, Russia is actually their second biggest country for units sold now. Uh, so again, you can see the impact that it can make. Um, Total Biscuit doubled sales of 10 Second Ninja. Uh, PewDiePie, well, I'm sure you've heard of Flappy Bird. Uh, after PewDiePie played Flappy Bird, then Flappy Bird was absolutely everywhere. Um, it was it's kind of crazy actually how much you saw Flappy Bird. So um, again, just the impact is just phenomenal. Um, so YouTubers are mainly finding games through the press. So again, it's important to be getting written press for your games. Um, but YouTubers are also, so um, a year ago they weren't getting so many emails and now developers have started to realize that they should probably be emailing YouTubers. Um, so a lot of YouTubers now say that they're, they're starting to see the number of emails they get rise. Um, and YouTubers are just generally seeing stuff on social media as well, so they'll watch you know, sort of Twitter and Facebook, things like that. Um, and other YouTubers as well, again, it's how it works, a lot of the YouTubers sort of hang out together online and we'll play games together, etc. So if you can get one big YouTuber to cover your game, the chances are others will as well. Um, I mean, uh, YouTubers are getting more emails, but they're still not getting many. So you can see here on the left is how many emails YouTubers are getting. So kind of still over 100 of them that I surveyed said they didn't get any. Uh, there's a few who are getting a number now. But if you see the number of emails that the, the press get, uh, you can see there's, they get loads. They get sort of up to 50 emails a day and more, which makes it a lot more difficult for the press to work out which games to cover. Um, so YouTubers are very, very similar to uh, live streamers. They just want a code for your game. They want a link to a YouTube video to see, you know, sort of how it looks so they can decide whether it would look good on their channel. Um, and a story as well, just for them, just so that they can kind of bulk the video up. Um, so things, ways that we've been working with YouTubers, um, uh, like I mentioned at the start, we've been working with them for a while and it's part of why Tiny Build has been doing so well. 
Um, so, for example, in our game Speedrunners, uh, we got a bunch of YouTubers to be characters in that, and that worked out really well for us. Uh, just like with Twitch, we've got a big list of, uh, of YouTubers in the email so that we can get in touch with them all. And in the same way that we get in touch with, with Twitch streamers, we kind of send YouTubers preview builds and things like that. Uh, a lot of the bigger YouTubers will only want to make sort of one video about each game. So um, the chances are that they won't care about previews and things like that. Someone, someone like Total Biscuit will specifically say that he will only make one video of a game on the day that it comes out. Um, so you need to make sure that if you're working with those kind of people, that you are preparing them for the launch and making sure that they have a code for, for the day it comes out. Um, so just like with the list that we made for Twitch streamers, uh, there's a guy who has made a list of contact information for YouTubers. So if you go to that link at the bottom there, um, you can find a big list. There's hundreds of YouTubers on there. Um, and again, if you need any of these links or anything like that, just come up to me afterwards and I'll definitely be able to, to give them to you. Um, so mobile games on YouTube and Twitch are interesting um, because uh, that it's not as prominent. There's not as many YouTubers who are doing videos of, of mobile games, but there are some. Um, so you know, we we've just launched a mobile game yesterday, actually, and uh, sort of we were getting people like AppSpy, for example, uh, will do loads of live streaming uh, and videos of of uh, mobile games. Uh, there's a guy called Lonnie as well, who's pretty big. PewDiePie does, obviously, although it's a lot harder to get him to cover your games now. Um, if there's a PC version of your mobile game, then obviously what you can do there is you can send them a, the PC version and ask if they want to play it for the launch of the mobile game, um, which can be useful. Uh, if you go to that link at the bottom there, that tiny URL, then you can find a list of mobile YouTubers. It, again, it's not massive. I think there's about 70 or 80 of them but it's still worth doing if you're putting a mobile game out. Um, so Vine's an interesting one. We've just been exploring Vine at the moment. Uh, so if you're not aware of what Vine is, it's, um, it's basically Twitter's version of video where you can make six second, small six second videos that just go on a loop. Um, so we've been exploring working with Viners uh, and essentially the way it works is that you get someone who is big on Vine to make a video about your game, and that will hopefully kind of expose it to the mainstream. The problem with Vine is that there's not as many um, Viners who do video games specifically. There's you know more people who just do funny videos. Um, but if you can get these people to make short videos about your games, then hopefully it will expose. Uh, we're still kind of exploring this a little bit. Uh, we're hoping that it's going to work for a, an upcoming game we've got. Um, but it's definitely something to keep in mind. Um, so just to give an idea then using all of this of kind of how we do it. So we just released Fearless Fantasy yesterday on iOS. Um, so basically we just tried to hit all of the obvious places and make sure that it was in, in front of as many eyeballs as possible. So the mobile press all knew about it and we got plenty of coverage there. Um, and then sort of because we got that, then we're getting some people covering it on Twitch as well, streaming the PC version, which came out last year. Uh, so we essentially just said to the live streamers, if you stream the PC version uh, on, on Thursday, on the launch day, then we'll send you extra codes. Uh, and asking those people to mention that the mobile version's out. Um, and same with YouTubers, we gave the PC version out to a lot of YouTubers. Um, other stuff as well that is worth kind of exploring. We did some Facebook promotions, kind of giving away some games on Facebook, doing little giveaways, asking people on Twitter to retweet. Uh, you know the kind of things. But um, essentially, the, the the way we see it, you just want to hit as many different places as possible. Because even if you get a small number of people covering you in each place, then it's going to build up to something big. Um, Right, so just before I finish, I just wanted to mention again, again, everything that I've been talking about, you, you need to do, okay? You, you absolutely need to do it. You need to be looking at these things. Because if you don't, then people aren't going to know about your game. Uh, and it's, it's, it, it's just such a shame, because there's so many amazing games I know coming from people in Russia, uh, and I kind of want to play all of them. So um, yeah, please do absolutely talk about all your games. Uh, right, I'm done, so thank you very much.
Thank you. Thank you, Mike, for your amazing talk. Uh, it was really amazing. A big round of applause to our amazing speaker. And now, guys, it's time for questions. Uh, if you have some questions, just raise your hand and wait for our volunteer with the microphone. And please don't forget to mention your name. I'm waiting for your questions. Okay, first Thanks question there. Hi there, thank you for your talk. My name is Eleona, I'm from TV channel Moscow 24, that's a federal national TV channel. Mm. Have you ever tried to work with TV shows on video games on national TV? Thank you. Uh, we haven't actually, but um, from what I can see, when it comes to TV, it's mainly sort of the really big games, you know, sort of the AAA stuff. Um, I mean, we, we actually, we have some TV companies on our like press list, so we send blasts to them. So they, they know about our games if, if somebody is reading those. Um, but no, we, we've not really explored it just because, I don't know, I, I, it's probably not worth it right now, you know? We're, um, it's, it, whenever you see those kind of shows covering games, it's always the big blockbusters, right? It's always the Call of Duties, etc. cetera. Um, so I don't know if it will really be worth it, to be honest. Okay, thank you for your questions. Any other? Okay. Uh, Yaroslav Gradetsky, CTN Video. Uh, do you think there will be any um, clones of Twitch uh, that will be successful in the near future? Clones? Uh, yeah. Uh, I've seen a couple. What was the... Uh, there was one that we were looking at, something box. I can't remember what that was called. I mean, there's there's a there's a couple out there, um, and maybe one will, but I mean, right now Twitch is just so gigantic that it doesn't see. I've I've seen some big Twitch celebrities who have said they're leaving they're leaving Twitch and going to another one uh, because for whatever reason Twitch should upset them, um, and they've gone off to an, you know another of these live streaming platforms. And then I've just not heard from them in a while. <laughs> so it just, it seems like, especially since Amazon jumped in as well, it seems like Twitch is the one to focus on right now. Uh, so, I mean, we haven't been, uh, we, like I say, we've been looking at other ones, but we've not really been contacting people on them right now. So. Uh, hello, uh, Mikhail Chuprakov, uh, Nice Play Games, uh, indie game developer. Uh, so what is the best uh, how to uh, get attention from YouTuber uh, for my game? What is the best? Yeah. Way? So, yeah. So, so basically, what you want to try and do is get some press for your game first, and you want to be doing that like as early as your game looks good. You know, so so you don't want to leave it till the last minute or anything. You don't want to wait until the game's about to launch. You want to, at the point where your game can look good in videos, that's the point when you want to be showing people. So if you can get press to write about your game, then hopefully, you know, if someone like Rock Paper Shotgun, uh, a website like that, writes about your game, then it's going to be in the eye line of YouTubers then because I know like all of the YouTubers read those kind of sites. And it's, it's all about just chipping away slowly. So if sort of six months before your game is going to launch, you are getting your game in their eye line and they hear about your game and they hear about it a, a few more times up until the launch, then when it comes to actually asking a YouTuber to, to cover your game when it comes to the launch, there's a much higher percentage that they are going to just because it's in their minds. So it's, it's just generally, what I always tell people is, you should absolutely not just wait until the game is about to launch and then start, then start talking about it then because no one's going to care. You need to be just chipping away slowly and letting people know bit by bit by bit. So just even with, you know, you, as you're developing the game and you put a cool new thing in the game that looks really great in a video, then you just make a video of that and you tell people about it and you show people the video. Um, and that kind of thing works really well because then if people are constantly seeing small snippets of your game and thinking, hey, that looks cool, 
then by the time the game comes out, there's a higher chance that they're actually going to want to cover it. So yeah, it's like I say, it's all about just keep chipping away and keep trying over and over again. You won't see any effect at first, most likely, that when you put out a, few, a couple of videos at first, no one's going to care. But they are seeing it. Just because they don't talk about it doesn't mean it's not in their minds. And by the, t by the time that you put out something that does interest them, they're already going to have it in the backs of their minds. So that's kind of what it's all about, really. Uh, Alexey Volovic, Regal at the Metsword Studios. What about cyber sports? I didn't try it myself, but probably it could be a good idea to, to communicate with cyber sports teams to make championship, to stream. With, with, sorry, with what, sorry? Cyber sports, like for example, oh, okay. they're playing StarCraft yeah. or, I don't know, Counter-Strike. Yeah. So I mean, we're, so we're exploring uh, that kind of stuff with speedrunners at the moment. Um, I mean, it seems like, obviously, if a game looks good as an eSport, then it looks good in video. So uh, basically the way that we're seeing it is that we're trying to get lots of small LAN parties going first. We're trying to build buzz around that. Um, and then we, we've, we've run a, a few sort of bigger events with YouTubers, etc. But I think again with that kind of thing, it's all about in the build up to the game, letting people know about it, working with as many different smaller ones as possible. Because the more of these smaller events you're working with, the more likely that people at the bigger ones are going to care. I mean, at the, at the bigger esports competitions, they play the same games over and over again, right? They, they play the League of Legends and, and Counter-Strike, Go, etc. So it's going to be incredibly difficult to infiltrate those. And it's probably not going to happen until your game is massive. Because, you know, if your game isn't massive, then there's not going to be tons of people who want to watch it. Um, but the way to kind of build up that popularity as an eSport is to be, like I say, going to these smaller events and chipping away at those. Uh, and that's kind of what we're exploring with speedrunners at the moment. So, cheers. Uh, it's me, Tajik Malov, uh, player. Uh, so my question also is about uh, eSports. Yep. Uh, for example, we have uh, two different kinds of Twitch uh, streamers. Mm. First of all, it's uh, pro players who mm. Twitch uh, their games when they are pro. Uh, and the other stuff is uh, uh, normal people who play in different games but with uh, some entertainment stuff. Yeah. Uh, so what do you think? Is it possible to bring a pro, pro player to play your game? on his channel. Uh, just uh, ask him to switch his game when he is, where he is pro uh, to stream your game. For example, yeah, there are ma uh, many people who are watching this guy only for this game. For example, like mm. uh, LOL, Hearthstone, yeah. CSGO. But if you ask to play him, mm. your game, for example, I don't know, single one, single player game, not uh, multiplayer game, do you mm. think it's gonna work? Yeah, so I mean, with the, the kind of Twitch streamers who only stream the one game, you know, the people who only do League of Legends, etc. A lot of the time you'll find that they will do kind of small breaks to play other games. Uh, it's, some of them just like exclusively stream one game. And honestly, there's probably not much point in talking to those people because that's how they build their audience. And I, I think I've talked to some of them before and they say that if they've ever tried to play another game, then people stop watching because they only watch them for that one game. There are, however, some live streamers like that who a lot of the time you'll see kind of on their, on their Twitter or you'll see in the little description on Twitch, they'll say that every now and again they'll take a break to play another game. So it's worth, uh, if you're, especially if you're trying to kind of make a game become an eSport, you know, a popular eSport, because those people obviously have a lot of pull because they're already big with that kind of thing. So. If you can get them to care about your game through, I don't know, through email, etc., just having a back and forth with them, then yeah, that's absolutely worth trying. Um, but yeah, like I say, with some of the with the really big ones, that especially a lot of the Hearthstone players, they they don't care about playing anything else. They just want to sit and play Hearthstone for like nine hours straight. So <laughs> yeah, I don't think you'll have much luck with them, to be honest. Dimitri Glenko's up to I Lob. Uh, so, if you compare big media companies with independent streamers, they, uh, they have less responsibility, so they may not like the game. So, what happens if their review is negative? 
can stream in negative your game negatively? I don't, to be honest, when I've seen people streaming games, a lot of the time it's not sort of positive or negative. It's it's sort of them just playing the game, right? Like they we I think with what's happened with what happened with YouTubers, for example, is that when YouTubers started getting big, they a lot of it was incredibly positive. Like the the press were always sort of you know when you have to write a review, you have to think of the pros and cons, etc., and that's how you base your score. With YouTube, then YouTubers came along, and they don't have to sit there and say this is the good things and this is the bad things. They just play the game, and when they're having fun, then they make a lot of noise. Um, so Twitch streamers now, when I'm watching people playing our games, I don't really notice them saying good or bad things. They're just sort of playing, and the, the in the comments, people are kind of interacting with them and telling them to try things, etc. So it's not really something we've ever we've ever worried about because it's not. I don't think Twitch is a platform where that sort of criticism happens, to be honest. It's more just people idly playing games, really. So, yeah, I, I mean, I, I wouldn't worry too much about it. So. Hi, my name is Hi. Konstantin. I have some questions for you. First okay. question, did you even used to try uh, Twitch promotions? It's a special category. I think you just pay money and Twitch, and you get top one in Twitch channel, I mean. So, uh, Sorry, say, say again, I didn't, I didn't catch it. You didn't even try this. Sorry, say again? <laughs> I mean Twitch promotion category, special category on Twitch, where uh, if you, you know, try logging on Twitch, I mean as a winner, you can see a special... Uh, last time you see a game, not good, called. Uh, so uh, you enter Twitch and you can see this game. Uh, I think some no. Oh, so you mean you mean like getting your your game on like the front page of Twitch? Yes, yes. This one. It's a promotion from Twitch. I mean. Yeah, I mean it. It seems like there's two ways to do that. It seems like one, it's just games that are already popular. It, it seems like the games that have the most people playing them at the time, it will populate the front page of those. And it seems like also you can pay Twitch, you can do like a, a paid promotion where your game is on the front page. Um, I think as well, Twitch will a lot of the time, where if they know that there's a big stream coming up that has been that kind of talked about a lot. So, you know, for example, um, when the awesome game's done quick, you know, things like that, the, the kind of big, especially charity streams as well, um, a lot of the time when Twitch knows that something big like up, then they will make a big deal about it. They will feature on the front page, and they will tweet about it, etc. Um, but I mean, if you're talking about like smaller kind of independent games getting on the front page of Twitch, uh, I think it's probably worth getting in contact directly with Twitch and asking them about it, because, like I said earlier, they're they're actually still quite young and early and trying to work out how all of this works for them. Um, so I think that it's a case of talking to them and finding out basically what you have to do to get on there. Um, I mean, when we're, just for example, when, when we're, we've got a game coming out on Xbox soon and we've been talking to them about on launch day getting it on the front page and they've been quite receptive to that. So it might just literally just be a case of just talk directly to Twitch and just see what they say. Oh, thank you. And the next question, did you even pay uh, some money to YouTubers or live streamers? Or were we just doing this for free because you're a tiny build or something like this? Sorry, did you pay money uh, sometimes for YouTubers or live streamers or we do uh, this for free for you? What, so what's the question? That we, do, we, do we pay money? Yes, yeah, sometimes. Yeah, so uh, we, we haven't paid any money to Twitch streamers. Um, we've, we've tried it with YouTubers. Um, it seems to work quite well for the bigger ones, um, but to be honest, I don't think you really need to as such. Like, a lot of it is kind of free promotion. Um, it can be useful on a larger scale. I know that there's some people who have worked with, you know, kind of big YouTube networks uh, and done big events at, uh, at E3 and things like that, and apparently that works quite well. Um, but I think that it's the more, it's the grander scale promotions, paid promotions that work better than, you know, just sort of paying one or two YouTubers here and there. Um, 
so yeah, if you, if you were going to explore that, you'd probably want to pour a, quite a bit of money into it, to be honest. Oh, thank you. And the last question, uh, if it's not a secret, can you tell us about your most successful uh, game promotion anytime? You, YouTubers or live streamers, it doesn't matter. Effectiveness, uh, I mean, the most successful case. What, the most successful for us? Or yes, any game. Uh, for, what, the most successful promotion for Tiny Build? Yes. Uh, it was definitely PewDiePie playing... Um, so basically what happened was we worked with Gfinity, uh, which is an eSports company, um, and we worked with them and PewDiePie, and he live-streamed the game, and uh, basically he was just saying to people, uh, if you, I'm going to play the game now, and if you buy the game and then come online and, and find me, then we can play the game against each other. And tons of people bought the game just because they wanted to play with him. Because these people on YouTube, they're like celebrities to a lot of younger people. So the idea that they could play a game with like their hero is, is kind of, oh, it's, it's amazing the, you know, the kind of engagement that you can get from that. So um, yeah, that was, that was by far the, the biggest for us. Okay, thank you, that's all. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have more time for questions, and uh, I have just uh, something to say. Please uh, ask only one question, one question per person. Please res respect each other and give the others chance to ask more questions, okay? So, uh, thank you one more, one more time, and uh, now...